Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and today we're going to look at an affordable Android smartphone on AT&T. This is the Pantech Flex. Now, Pantech has made other affordable phones for AT&T and Verizon, but they're really starting to step up their game. And for $49, this is a pretty nice Android phone that runs Ice Cream Sandwich, Android OS 4.0. It has a 4.3-inch Super AMOLED display and a cutting-edge Qualcomm S4 dual-core CPU. And we're going to look at it now. So the Pentec Flex will be available September 16th for $49.99 with contract. And you actually get a pretty good phone for the money. AT&T has really been surprising us actually with uh, some very nice phones at low price points. But this guy has a 4.3 inch QHD Super AMOLED display. So you get nice colors and it's quite bright. And QHD means 540 by 960. What you're not getting here is that 1280 by 720p display you're getting on the top end phones on AT&T say the HTC One X, the Samsung Galaxy S3, and even some of the $99 Android phones are hitting that resolution right now. But for a 4.3 inch size, I, I'm okay with it. it. It has a nice combination of readability and sharpness at the same time. Pantech phones have been kind of clunky and chunky. For the money, you can't get too much style. Usually this one really changes things. It's not a bad looking phone from the front. I wouldn't call this unique or uniquely attractive, but it's not bad looking either. And look how thin this is. Really thin phone. So no more chunky monkey for your budget price. It also looks and feels like a decent quality piece in hand. Uh, not budget looking at all. Interesting two-tone look. Kind of modern, kind of techno here. Um, but nice. And again, unique. Doesn't look like every other phone on the market. You can see you've got your speaker grill here. Here's an 8 megapixel camera with an LED flash. Soft touch finish here, harder plastic over here, and this entire back peels off so you can access the removable battery, the micro SD card slot, and the micro SIM card slot. And to do that, so to open it up, you just grab it right here by the pry point slot, and it snaps on pretty tight. You just work your way around to loosen, loosen it up. And then you yank it off, and then there's your 1830 milliamp battery your micro SIM card and your SD card slot. This does not come with an SD card slot but it is compatible with cards up to 32 gigs which is what we have in it right now. And you can see with the back off here's our big speaker grill. As we continue looking around the phone here's your power button right here on the side in the middle where you do, usually don't see it. You usually, usually it's at the top or on the upper edge of the side but that's where it is. Micro USB for charging and for copying files to and from your computer. Up top is your headphone jack, 3.5 millimeter standard. Volume controls on the side. And nothing but that little pry point down here. And the edges, you can see we get a little metal ring around here. Nice looking phone. The Pantech Flex runs on a Qualcomm S4 latest generation CPU. 1.5 gigahertz dual core. That's the same CPU you get in the US HTC One X and Samsung Galaxy S3. So you're talking top of the line there, and that's with the Adreno 225 graphics. And as you would expect, benchmarks are quite good on the phone. On Quadrant, the phone scores 5094. That's every bit as good as the high end competition. On Tutu is 6859. Sun Spider was 1959, so that's about mm, average for Android smartphone. And Egypt off screen test in GL benchmark is 55 FIPS, so quite respectable. Good for gaming, good for everything you want to do in terms of horsepower and size. Phone has a gig of RAM and 8 gigs of internal storage with about 5.6 gigs free for your use. And of course, you can use that micro SD card slot to expand storage further. The phone has dual band Wi Fi 802.11bg, and that's a nice feature. It has Wi Fi Direct and DLNA for wireless streaming of media, and it can act as a mobile hotspot for your tablet, your notebook, whatever it is you need. It also has Bluetooth and it has a GPS. And it comes with the usual slew of AT&T applications, AT&T Navigation, AT&T Family Maps, as well as Google Maps, Google Navigation, and all the usual stuff you'd expect to find on a smartphone today. Phone runs Android OS 4.04 Ice Cream Sandwich. No word on whether it will get Jelly Bean. Uh, for this price, don't be expecting upgrades. Most likely, I'm guessing not, but we'll see. The phone has a front video chat camera you can use with Skype or the video calling application of your choice and an 8 megapixel camera on the back that actually takes some pretty decent photos and video. Really what sets the Pantech apart is this is the newbie friendly phone. It has an option for user interface here. We have this not really, you know, customized version of an Android interface right here with our usual home screens, widgets, that kind of stuff. 
And if you tap there, you can bring up your icon drawer. Now, this is cu customizable in multiple ways, but first I'm going to show you what I mean about the newbie friendly feature. If we go to settings, you see change user experience right here, and we can switch between Pantech Easy Experience and look at a video about it, or just use standard Android. So let's switch to Easy Interface. Which features, notice, no swirling home screens. Gosh, that might be too confusing for some people, huh? That's the idea. Everything gets a little bit bigger, easier to see. You got your clock, you got your weather over here. We haven't set our location yet. And a menu that takes you to various functions on the phone. So it's, it's usually limited, it's usually simplified. And if you want to get to all your applications, there's something called shortcuts here, and we have giant buttons. So they've got a couple of apps here and here, and you can add more of the pre-installed apps on. I'm not sure that's so newbie-friendly. Not showing people all the apps on their phone may be not so much a good idea. Uh, but there it is. And now we've gone back to normal Android land here. and Again, we have all of our widgets back and our shortcuts. And if you take a look at all applications, you can see how they've customized. This is sort of like LG's UI. We have options of creating different dividers here. By default, we've got apps, which has, well, all of our apps right there. Standard side swiping navigation. You see this down here? This says groups. By default, it creates one called download, so you can look at everything you've downloaded, or you can set this up alphabetically as well. And you can create your own groups and customize it, or just kind of leave it the way it is and always look at just the apps view if you want a more standard Android experience. And if you look at alphabetical, it actually has alphabetical dividers. And if you want to customize the experience, there's an edit button down there. And you can also use that to delete any application that is deletable on the phone. This down here is pretty much your standard Android user interface strip. You can either have the menu button down here or up top, depending on who's been customizing Android lately. But this is standard, so we don't have any hardware buttons. And we've got shortcuts here to commonly used applications. And you can put your own shortcuts there, it's reminding you. So that's what Pantech's done with the Android user interface. Not so bad. And their lock screen is also customized. We've seen this on, on their Android phones before. And you can see you can just drag these applications here to the center. So we want to go straight into camera. We just drag it there. It says OK. And it will launch the camera. Here we are taking a look at our cat right now, chilling on the windowsill. And you can see that and if you tap over here, you've got a whole wealth of other settings. Pretty nice stuff. GPS location, shutter sound, review screen, various exposures, shooting modes, color effects, more options. So not bad at all. And in terms of shutter speed, not super duper fast, but not too bad. And we're in standard, not HDR shooting mode right now. And we just switched over to video mode to shoot a video of our darling cat. And here are our options for that. And we can go all the way up to full HD 1080. Say something, Gupta. Talk to us, kitty cat. Oh, oh, cat's being attacked. So there it is, shooting video. And let's see how that came out. So now we've got our video clip. Now the cat was very backlit, so a little bit hard to see him. But yeah, it's, not, it's not too bad. Talk to us, kitty cat. Oh, oh, the cat's being attacked. Pretty decent speaker on there. You can hear it too, and pretty good recording of audio. Now we're taking a look at the web browser, which has also been customized here. I'm not too thrilled with wasting this much space for the tab area, but other than that, scrolling speed is good. Pinch zooming speed, just fine on it. Don't expect any performance issues. And there's this little drawer down here. Every time you type in a URL, it starts to load a page. It'll pop up and it'll hide, auto hide. But if you want to bring it up, you can see it's been customized to add sharing and social networking things here. And you can just swipe that back down. And to access the usual Android browser settings, we've got this right here. So that's the web browser. Now we'll check out and see how it plays video, streaming. And you can see what I mean, this bar just pops up here for a little bit first. 
and we'll check out our video review of the Sonia Xperia Tablet S. And this is streaming over AT&T's 4G LTE network. And popping out to full screen. Once again, pretty good speaker on it. Good streaming performance. Well behaved. And then we'll check out 1080p video playback with a high quality MPEG-4 trailer. One thing about Super AMOLED screens, you do get very vivid colors. And that's playing just fine. Works great. Now beyond the usual bevy of AT&T applications like Navigator, Family Maps, Yellow Pages Mobile, we have the standard suite of Google software here. Google Maps, YouTube Player, Quick Lights also preloaded here. We've got Pantech's own social networking application with widgets. Does a good job of Facebook and Twitter, it's not bad at all. Google Play Music's on board, of course. We've got Net Media, which is Pantech's DLNA streaming on here, and we have Pulse Preloaded, which is a very graphical uh, newsreader. I like it a lot on tablets. I'm not so much big on it for the smallest screen of a phone, but hey, you may like it just fine. And we have Pill Reminder here. Interesting, funny preloaded application to have, but well, it's there. We also have AT&T Radio on board and AT&T Live TV, which is their streaming service for monthly fee. You can watch on-demand and live TV shows. Call quality on the phone is good. It's not as stellar as the HTC One X and the Galaxy S3 or even the Motorola Atrix HD, which are the top voice phones on AT&T, but conversations are clear. You don't have to work hard to understand anything, just not super crystal clear and really, wow, full, full. But it, it gets the job done. In terms of data speeds, it does an excellent job. We have very good AT&T service here, and you can see on their LTE network, the kind of results that we've gotten, which is better than a lot of people have for broadband. We've got 25 megabit down and 20 up for some of our highest speeds there. We're still testing battery life on the, pho on the phone. So far it's, it has no problem making it through the day on a full charge. Really it looks like a day and a half with moderate use to two days and standby times we're still testing that. And now for a little size comparison for those of you who are also considering higher end phones we have the Samsung Galaxy S3 in stunning red here. In the middle we have our Pantech Flex and this is the HTC One X. So, though these guys have bigger displays, 4.7 and 4.8 inches, they're not that much bigger than the 4.3 inch Pantech. In terms of thickness, well they're all pretty slim phones. Samsung is the master of thin, but you can see the Pantech's just equally as thin. And here we have our One X. So, skinny phones, one and all. So that's the Pantech Flex. It's going to be available September 16th on AT&T for $49.99 with contract and really not a bad phone for the price at all. Good looking phone. Solidly made. Cutting edge CPU. Good performance. You don't get the super duper high resolution that you get on some of the higher end phones, but other than that, all the basics are really nicely covered. It'll be interesting to see how this does against the just announced LG Escape. Also going to be $50 and have uh, some similar specs. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Visit our website for the full review of the Pantech Flex and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel.